This is Marks Hall, where Pace Pleasantville's campus began back in 1963. Thanks to a very generous gift made by alumnus, trustee, and of course benefactor Wayne Marks. It actually all began because of the very close friendship between Dr. Edward J. Mortola, longtime president and then later chancellor of Pace University, and Wayne Marks. He and his wife, Helen, decided after their family was raised that they would give their beautiful estate here in northern Westchester to Mr. Marx's alma mater. We're approaching Wilcox Hall named for Byron Wilcox, who was a benefactor and alumnus of Pace Institute. And this building was completed in 1964. And it originally housed the gymnasium and classrooms. And like so many Pace buildings through the years, it has been refurbished and transformed. This is Dyson Hall, named for alumnus, trustee, and benefactor Charles Dyson. This was one of the very first buildings constructed on the Pleasantville campus, a campus which opened in September 1963. Chote House, um, our lovely pink building high atop the hill, was erected way back in 1867 for Samuel Baker, who was a shoe manufacturer. And not long thereafter, Dr. George Chote acquired it and decided to utilize what we today still know as Chote House with its faculty offices and meeting facilities and faculty dining room as his private home, but with what we call Marks Hall attached to it um, as the sanitarium. Fast forward a little more than a century to 1968, Chote House was transformed into a dormitory. Miller Hall was partially completed by the start of the 1969-1970 academic year. And then just one year later, Leanhard Hall was dedicated. And Miller Hall is named for Samuel Miller, who, like Gustav Leanhard, uh, was a trustee and an alumnus of Pace. I like to tell my students that one day they will be alumni of this great university and that it's important to stay in touch and to support their university because the support that alumni provide for the university not only enhances the university itself and enables the university to do more uh, for uh, current and future students, but that support also enhances the value of every degree that was ever conferred by Pace University. Well, what made Pleasantville unique, of course, was the hope uh, that Dr. Mortola at that time and the trustees and, and the entire Pace community had for the campus. Uh, it was seen as a contrast to, to, to New York. 
you know, when you think about the, the motto uh, and the credo of Pace University, Opportunitas, this was another option. This was another, in a sense, another arrow in the quiver. It was another element of the university's portfolio. Uh, the university had had uh, an urban past, but this was a, a country past, a suburban past. When I first came, of course, all the faculty wore, all the women faculty wore heels and stockings and suits, skirts and jackets. The men all dressed in um, navy blue or gray suits, white shirts, no blue shirts, usually the rep ties. We had one faculty member who wore brown suits, but he was in the philosophy department, so that was all right. It was a very, it was a very formal looking place. Nobody can believe, given what was happening on college campuses, nobody can believe that we were all wearing pine jackets in 1968 and 1969, but we were. But that went away very, very quickly. Well, it was the 80s, so students dressed very differently back then. I remember, you know, getting dressed up to go to class. Uh, it wasn't, you know, students didn't wear sweats to class and didn't come to class in their pajamas like they do now. Students dressed up when I was, when I was here, you know, we, it would be a big deal. Uh, we would get dressed up to go to class and uh, everyone had big hair because it was the 80s. And I can remember, you know, having uh, the, the very um, interesting look um, with guys and girls and cars were big as well. Pace Pleasantville has always been a uh, a, a friendly campus in terms of the staff and the faculty getting together. Um, I can remember when I first became a staff member I was invited by Dr. Robert Dell um, who would have uh, happy hours up at Book Bomb House and he would uh, provide cocktails and hors d'oeuvres every Friday and um, we would all get together and just have a good time and they would last for about an hour, two hours, and uh, they were fun. They, they, and, and that's what I remember best, but even today, the, fa I, the faculty and staff really know each other and really respect each other and work together. We were very much like a very tight family. President Mortola was the president. He was, uh, he knew everyone uh, uh, by name, but he knew about everyone. Um, and there wasn't, because the university was not looked at as much as a business, which it is today with so much, uh, you know, competition, it was more family style, more, more intimate, um, it was a very nice environment, and then we had, of course, those, gosh darn, uh, chickens and geese and uh, whatever else was flying around the campus. Uh, that was before they got the dogs to, to chase the geese. Um, I loved it from the get-go. Um, I brought passion, my passion, to the table, and I think that that would explain why I'm still here, old lady that I am, because I just love my students. I love what I teach, um, and I love the give and take. So it was a wonderful, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. What I am struck about uh, on this campus is there is a really great sense of community, a great sense of commitment to, to our students, and which is really what's, what this is all about. But there is a terrific sense here on the part of faculty, staff, everyone working here that uh, students come first. Uh, here at Pace, we don't have a theater. I had always been clamoring for a theater, but so far it hasn't happened. So we began to look around at what could work as a theater. So I used Kessel. It had a little stage, and I did my first show there with Jeff Harder, who was then Dean for Students, and the children and grandchildren of faculty. And uh, as time went on, the shows got larger and larger. So that in 2009, I did a show with faculty with 50 members of the faculty. It was called Pace Goes West. Everybody was in Western dress. I wrote the show. Uh, it was hilarious. Everybody, all the students came to see the faculty members. And it was a show, you know, it's more than just a show. It's community. I think it's the only community we have left. We all get together. We all enjoy something together. It's wonderful. Like society, the student body has changed. Um, it's a lot more diverse. It's a lot more accepting. 
Um, I basically was a gay person here on campus alone uh, without much support and not many people would uh, be accepting of me. Um, and we had a small little group of students. It was sort of like the gay underground. And we would meet at this great bar that was in Valhalla. And we would have Friday nights and Thursday nights at this uh, gay bar. And um, today, I mean, everybody is welcomed on campus. There's an LGBT center. Um, we're hiring somebody in the uh, fall to, to support LGBT students. So the campus and the students and society have changed a lot. And um, I think PACE has always reflected the way society has gone in terms of offering that op opportunitas as its model. But PACE has been great because before I got bored, they found another job for me. You were either chair or starting some new program or doing something else. So it's never been a boring job. And it's been very, very rewarding. You get back as a, as a professor, one who's in, integrated with her students, you get back a tremendous amount. I, I have students who's, who have come back to me with their kids and I've taught their children. So it's, um, it's a wonderful uh, love affair. Well, uh, I look forward to what the future will bring. I know that there are new things on the horizon. Uh, I know that we have a lot of building going on. I know that we're going to have a lot of new people here. I look forward to the adventure of it. Uh, and uh, I look forward to it with great optimism. Pace Pleasantville campus will be a dynamic residential suburban campus, enabling students to have a, a great student life, campus life experience. We do currently have a beautiful 200 acre campus. However, it's dominated by roads and parking lots in the central part of campus. We're going to take the parking lots out of the central part of campus, move them to the perimeter, and we'll have a much more pedestrian friendly campus. On the co-curricular front, we're going to have more living learning communities. Those are communities where students who have a common interest are going to live in the same space. And they'll have a faculty advisor, they'll have classrooms, and they'll have study space that will enable them to engage in that common interest. Kessel Campus Center is going to be expanded significantly. We're going to have added space for dining because we're bringing more students over from Briarcliff. But more importantly, we're going to have more space for student clubs and the student government and student associations so there can be a more vibrant experience in the campus center. That really is the center of the student space and it's right in the middle of campus. The environmental center is going to be rebuilt entirely. We're building two new buildings for the Environmental Center. We're going to move the displays and of course the animals to the new location which will be just adjacent to Peyton House and the Goldstein Fitness Center. The athletics program is going to see a major improvement. We're, built, we're rebuilding all of our fields. The football field is going to be converted to a multi-purpose field. We're going to have bleachers in that field for over 2,000 fans. We're going to have new lighting in the field and we're going to add much better female sports. What we do in all of our academic programs is we prepare students for the profession. They're professionals in a variety of fields in all of the schools that we have on campus, the five schools that are housed here in Pleasantville. We provide them with a great uh, experience so they leave here prepared to excel in their careers. We're already one of the best universities in New York State. We actually are the best university in New York State in terms of internships and experiential learning. That's a U.S. News and World Report assessment. The community over this period of time has really come together and crystallized this plan for the university going forward. We're celebrating 50 years here. We're now preparing for the next 50 years on campus. And I'm very confident that the next 50 years will be even better than the 50 great years that we already have. 50 years ago, 400 students came to classes for the first time in a construction site. That year was all about the future, a whole new direction for this university's historic mission of Opportunitas. Today, once again, we are all about the future. We break ground on a major reconstruction of a significant part of this campus. And we have started major initiatives to make the academic program and student life here 
even more compelling and more powerful. This campus has a great future.